There's a new clinical trial that's showing significant pain reduction in fibromyalgia, like 50% reduction of fibromyalgia pain. And I want to tell you why I am not convinced. I'm Dr. Jared Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory. And every week, among other things, I look at the scientific publications and I look for new clinical trials. And that's because I'm always looking for new breakthrough treatments. Now you can do this too. You can go to pubmed.gov. You can put in whatever your condition is, whether it's fibromyalgia or myalgic encephalitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, long COVID, cold for illness. Put that in. You can put in clinical trial and then you can sort by the most recent results and you can see if there's some that catch your attention. But but I do that as well. And if I see something really interesting, then I can present it here on my channel. So one that came up last week was on eye movement desensitization and reprocessing or EMDR for fibromyalgia. Now, EMDR is a clinical psychotherapeutic tool that's typically used for anxiety, PTSD, uh, maybe depression in some cases. And I'm just going to give the very general uh, idea of how it works. And so it involves, at least classically, it involves left-right eye movements as you recall a negative memory. And so the therapist will instruct you on how to reframe that memory, how to direct attention with that memory, how to reinterpret what happened and and change the emotions associated with how that memory is stored in your brain as a way of getting past that trauma. Now, even though I'm a neuroscientist, I know nothing about EMDR. I'm not qualified to critique it. I can't tell you if it works or not. I would have to read the quite sizable literature before I could tell you whether or not EMDR works and how it can even possibly work. So this talk today is not about EMDR. And I can't, question, I can't answer questions about EMDR, but I am qualified to judge the quality of clinical trials, and I am qualified to talk about fibromyalgia treatments. And so what I'm going to talk about today is what makes a scientific paper an impactful one and why sometimes results can look great, but I'm still not convinced. So let's take a look at the paper. This is from a Turkish medical research group, and this paper was published in the Frontiers of Psychiatry. This is an open access paper, by the way, which means everyone can get a hold of it, which is great. I love it when research groups do that. And I put a link to the paper in the description so you can take a look at it yourself. And it's called a randomized control trial of eye movement desensitization and reprocessing or EMDR therapy in the treatment of fibromyalgia. So they wanted to know, basically, does EMDR help fibromyalgia pain? So not targeting anxiety or trauma. I mean, not, not directly. They're really going after fibromyalgia pain. The idea here is that fibromyalgia and individuals with fibromyalgia may have an element of early childhood trauma that needs to be worked through and may be contributing to their fibromyalgia pain. So they randomized 79 fibromyalgia patients to either receive 15 sessions of EMDR or to just continue their treatment as usual. And I think these patients came from a rheumatology clinic. So what did they find? Now, these results that I'm showing you show pain before treatment at the 5th, 10th, and 15th EMDR session and at one month and three month follow-up. Now, there's lots of outcomes, but... Um, they all, I, I believe all of them were significant between the groups. So I'm just going to show you the visual analog scale, which is kind of a classic outcome that we use in fibromyalgia. It just basically rates your overall fibromyalgia pain from zero to 100. And it's the, the top outcome in this list. But, but again, I think all of them showed similar results. I'm not sure about the pain I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure about the sleep quality, which is at the bottom, but I know for sure the other ones were significantly different between groups, which means EMDR worked better than treatment as usual. So what we can see here is a, a nice treatment effect with vast pain or the visual analog scale of pain from 0 to 100 decreasing with each treatment. 
there wasn't a figure, so uh, and I like to see things as a figure, and so I quickly plotted one for you. It shows the same information, just in a graphical format. Now, the top line in orange is the treatment as usual, and you can see that there was, you know, some reduction with being associated in this study, but the effects kind of bottomed out and wasn't very impressive. The individuals in the EMDR sessions continued to have a decline in their pain, which was sustained even when they stopped taking the uh, sessions after they stopped the session. So even three months after stopping treatment, the pain was still decreased, which is pretty impressive. So that's really the main results. They showed a 50% pain reduction which is great. It's still going strong at three months after treatment. That is great. You know, if someone is a clinician, this may be all they need to see. If they know that they've got these fibromyalgia patients, they have pain, they can't figure out what to do with it, and they know they can send these individuals to a therapist who can then do this treatment and it works, that may be good enough. Now, as a scientist, we have to know was the specific treatment tested, was that really what had the effect? And it wasn't a more general effect. It wasn't placebo expectancy, or it wasn't a distraction or something like that. It has to be something that uh, is specific to the treatment. And for any fibromyalgia treatment study, the control condition is absolutely critical. Because in fibromyalgia and with all pain, they're very heavily impacted by expectancy. And so your control condition, the people who don't get the active treatment, the, the other group, they, it has to be placebo controlled. The control condition has to be as convincing as the real treatment that you're testing. And, and as a clinical scientist, we spend a lot of time trying to develop a control condition that looks as much like the active treatment as possible so we can control for all that expectancy and placebo effects. So one I have always loved is way back um, when I did some acupuncture work, the acupuncturists had a great sham for acupuncture. So you know acupuncture are the needles you put, they go through the skin. But the sham acupuncture were needles that when you pushed it, they retracted back into the housing. But the patient doesn't know that. They feel that little prick and it feels like acupuncture, but it's not. It's not piercing the skin. That's a great, what we call a sham treatment um, because people couldn't guess whether they were getting the real thing or not. Uh, another example is in our psilocybin fibromyalgia trial, it's really, really hard to find a sham treatment for a psychedelic. You can't just give someone a sugar pill because they're going to know they're not feeling they're not seeing visual distortions or not having any um, drastic changes in their experience. And so we use dextromethorphan at a high enough dose that also causes can kind of perceptual differences. And that makes it where people don't know, especially if they've never had psilocybin or dextromethorphan at a high dose, they can't tell which one they're getting. And that means we did our job at the placebo control. So those are examples of really good sham treatments. But in back to this study with EMDR, they didn't do that. They used what's called treatment as usual, which is also called an open label design. So the patients knew whether they were getting this really interesting new experimental treatment or they weren't getting anything. And that can make a difference in the power of the results. Also, I have to note that the people in the EMDR group also, they were getting psychotherapy because EMDR involves a therapist who is guiding you through reframing of your memories and emotional content. And the control group wasn't getting that. And so we don't know for a variety of reasons. We can't know for sure. As cool as the results look, we can't know for sure that the EMDR was actually the critical factor. And so you would have to do, if I was doing an EMDR study, I would have to have fake EMDR, which removes what's considered to be the critical component, which is the eye movement, it would have to get rid of that completely. So I would have my control condition and I would make up something that has nothing to do with EMDR. Maybe I would have them look to the left and then 
tap their right shoulder, but not cross the center line because EMDR involves this alternating left right or movements left right. We'd get rid of all the movement and just do something that seems plausible and then say it's basically it's basically rebalancing the left and right side of your brain. We would give it a fancy name like cortical hemispheric rebalancing and then do the same treatment, but with that instead of the actual true EMDR treatment. Then if you still see a significant difference between your groups, if EMDR still outperforms that sham treatment, <clears throat> then you've got something interesting. And they would have to do that before I would be convinced that EMDR is truly effective for fibromyalgia pain. Now, I'm not criticizing the research team in this case, despite what it may seem like. I'm really not. I'm not criticizing the paper either. Not every study has to be a large and conclusive randomized control trial. Most of my clinical trials are not large conclusive RCTs. I run a lot of pilot studies to find out what might be worth a large study. So for this paper uh, that this research group did, they may have just wanted to take an initial look and that's useful. They might, they may have had very little money or no money. And so they couldn't do a bunch of sham treatments with a lot of people. So it could be that this paper did exactly what they were aiming to do. And so that's totally um, legitimate. It's just, that while I don't think the paper is bad, and by the way, I didn't see any problems with the statistics or the design, so I think all that's good. So no, again, no criticisms of the paper. It's just for me to be convinced, it would take that team coming back and having a proper sham controlled study. And then if they had that, it, it would get my interest. Now, if I also, if I read the literature, and as I said, I don't know the EMDR literature, which is quite large, but if I read the overall literature and I found that there was very convincing overall findings, that could change my mind as well. But right now, based on this study, again, for fibromyalgia pain, it's too premature to recommend this. That's my perspective as a clinical scientist and a neuroscientist. If you want the clinical perspective, which might be different, you would have to hear from a medical doctor or another clinician. And they might say something like, hey, it seems to work. There's no evidence of any serious ill effects of trying it. We have psychologists who are willing to do it. And, you know, if placebo is part of it, well, placebo is part of a lot of treatments that are used in the medical field. Um, so that, I don't know what they would say that's possible. But as a scientist, I have to know what's happening neurologically, because I want to know the mechanisms, because if we know the mechanism by which it works, we can optimize it. We can come up with something that works even better. We learn more about how we as humans work. And I don't know what that looks like for EMDR. I'm, I mean, how could going through early traumas while looking left and right help? I, I'm sure there are many, many therapy, um, explanations or theories for how that works. I mean, oh gosh, uh, if I were to come up with the first thing that comes to mind, I would say probably potential vagus nerve um, changes, maybe, maybe an increase of parasympathetic nervous activity having to do with the eye movement, but I don't know. I really have not looked at anything like that. But again, if we knew that the eye movement was critical, then we could do the studies to find out exactly what was happening uh, biochemically or neurologically to do that. And by the way, again, these studies may have already been done. We may actually already have those answers. I apologize, um, but that's just one, it's just a part of fibromyalgia treatment that I have not uh, become acquainted with in order to know whether those studies have been done or not. So that's it for today. Pretty quick uh, talk on just this kind of interesting paper, but just want to tell you what I think about it. Um, now, this week, speaking of clinical trials for fibromyalgia type stuff, uh, I'm going to be meeting with the major MECFS researchers all week and getting caught up on what's going on. And so next week, I hope to have some really interesting things to share, whatever I'm able to talk about, because a lot of the results that will be discussed this week are probably preliminary and they're not ready for prime time. But I'll, I'm sure I'll have at least a kind of general 
some general information about how the field of MECFS is moving right now. And so that could be helpful. So I look forward to uh, uh, doing another talk next week, and I hope you'll be able to uh, tune in then. I'll see you later.